This is Rick Paul, your FPP Nikon guy. Today I'm here to talk to you about the Nikon F6 camera. If you've been keeping track of the reviews I've been giving you on Nikon film bodies, you'll notice I've skipped the F5. Uh, the reason I'm skipping the F5 is I don't own an F5 yet, and uh, I'm only reviewing cameras for you that I've owned or, or physically used. So later this year I'll get an F5 and I'll review that one. But for today we're going to talk about the F6. The F6 is, is unlike most other film cameras we talk about on the Film Photography Podcast because it's still in production. You can go to B&H's website and you can order a brand new one today. They're, they're still available. They're still being produced. To look at the history of the F6, if you go back to the early 2000s, 35mm film was already starting to be replaced by digital in journalism. Nikon went about creating the F6. They already realized this. They decided to take it in a different angle. They designed it to appeal instead, rather than to professional journalists, to um, more affluent amateur photographers who wanted to own the best and were willing to pay for it. Uh, so they set out to make the F6 for a very different customer than the F5. So they designed it to be, you know, the F6 to be the smoothest, most refined SLR they'd ever created. And I think if you ever hold one, you'll find they, they succeeded. So some of the features of the F6, it's, it really has some features you won't find on any other film SLR, and you'll actually find features that are uh, more similar to what you'd find on a, on a digital SLR. To start with, it has a very full, bright, 100% viewfinder. This is one thing that everyone who picks up an F6 notices right off. They're just blown away by the viewfinder. It has a infallible color matrix exposure meter. Um, the meter on this camera is just incredible. It just seems to produce perfect exposures regardless of what how crazy the lighting situation is that you throw at it. Uh, one nice feature is that color matrix metering works with older Nikon lenses, the non-CPU uh, AI type Nikkor lenses. So those older 70s lenses, it, it still works with the color matrix metering. You get three uh, metering modes with it. You have the matrix metering, you have center weighted, and you have spot metering. There's a little dial up on the prism to switch between those. It has an 11 area wide autofocus uh, sensor with nine cross type sensors. It's known as the Multicam 2000 module. This is actually the same module that was used in the Nikon D2X digital camera. The D2X and the F6 were both created around the same time frame. The shutter on the F6 is really rather amazing. Uh, the shutter speeds are one eight thousandth of a second down to 30 seconds and that is a stepless shutter you get stepless speeds um, as long as you're in the program mode or the aperture priority mode if you go into um, shutter priority or manual mode you get one third steps. Another nice feature of the F6, which is again more akin to a digital camera, is it records and logs um, full EXIF data for every image you take. It has an internal memory, so all the exposure information is being stored in the camera, and then you can offload that data onto a CF card with a little accessory card reader they have called the MV1. I have this card reader, and it's really pretty nifty. Unlike previous F-Series models, the F6 does not have a removable prism, uh, but it doesn't really doesn't need one. Again, they were making this F6 for a different group of photographers, and they really didn't find on this previous F4 and F5 that a lot of people were really buying the, the other accessory viewfinder. So they decided to go with a fixed uh, viewfinder on this. It's also a smaller body. It's back to the F3 and F4 where the grip, uh, the vertical grip was an accessory you could add on. For the F6, you can get the MB10 vertical grip. It's a very, very solid grip. Once it attaches, it really the camera feels like it's one solid piece. It's very nice. Uh, one th nice thing about the vertical grip is it can use standard AA batteries or it can use EN EL4 rechargeable batteries, uh, which were used in various Nikon cameras, including the uh, the, the D3 series. So it's a pretty common Nikon battery. The camera does um, high speed shooting at about five and a half frames per second. Uh, when you put the vertical grip on, you get eight frames per second. So pretty, pretty incredible. One nice thing, I really enjoy this feature. It's got a built in data back function. If you remember back to the earlier days of professional cameras, you could change out the back on the back of the camera to imprint shooting data within the picture. The nice thing about the F6 is yes, you can still imprint the data on the image itself. It will also print it in between the frames so it doesn't interrupt your picture. Um, this is what I do with all my pictures. So when I develop my negatives along the edge between each frame, 
I have the exposure data right there I can see. So that's also kind of a nice feature. The camera has custom settings for 41 functions. A lot of things you can change about this camera and the way it operates. For example, a one feature I have turned on, if you're shooting a roll of 36, you can tell the camera to automatically rewind after the 36th exposure. So you always get you know the same amount of pictures for every roll. You always get 36 exposures every time. And I kind of like that. I'm not always too worried about that 37th and 38th exposure you might get on a long roll. I like getting the, the perfect 36 every time. It has automatic or manual rewind. When it gets to the end of the roll, it'll automatically rewind it. Or you can do manual rewind. If it's a roll you want to do slower or it's you want to be quiet about it, um, you can set it so it only does the manual rewind. Shooting data can be displayed on a rear LCD panel. It's just a black and white LCD panel. That data I was talking about that you can export, you can also view it on the back of the camera. So after you've taken a few pictures, you can say, hey, what did I just do for that last picture? You can pull it up and you can look at the data and see the shooting data for that picture. Again, it's it's really kind of neat. The F6 is compatible with every Nikon lens made since 1977, and even earlier ones if you get it what's called AI converted. For $114, Nikon will modify your F6 so that it'll work on every Nikon lens made since 1959. In, in summary, if, if you're looking for just the ultimate in film cameras and you want a brand new film camera, the F6 is truly the ultimate uh, film SLR. Hey, and if any of you are coming to the FPP walking workshop in March, uh, I'm planning on being there and I'm going to bring my F6 with me. So I'll give you a chance to hold it and, and take a look at it. Hope to see you there. Back to you, Michael. Hey, we're back. I want to thank Rick for that segment. Thank you very much. Very awesome. What I didn't mention, which I need to mention really fast, because uh, Rick Paul, our resident Nikon guy, will be at the Film Photography Podcast Walking Workshop 2015. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. 